Oh, he's the shove it man. Oh, he's the shove it man. Shove it squad. On Ring of the Hawk, we always listen to the fans, which is why this week's competitor is CM Punk in TNA. CM Punk or Spanky? Uh, you gotta have CM Punk matches in TNA. Well, what about for the others? Do CM Punk in TNA? Do CM Punk in TNA's run? Do every CM Punk match in TNA or I hit you with a brick? I've got a few new ones for you, Marky, for ROH. Okada, like I said a few weeks ago. CM Punk and Julio Gennaro and Sandman. CM Punk. CM Punk. CM Punk. CM Punk. CM Punk, buddy. And you can shove it if you don't. All right, all right, we get it. Honestly, I've never seen such fan anticipation for a Ring of the Hawk episode. They were rioting in the streets of Easton and Gordano for this one. Shout out to everyone for continuing to send me amazing wrestling art. I'm actually blown away by how talented you guys are. I mean, look at this Hawk Hogan. It's insane. Keep them coming on Instagram if you know the plan. So straight off the bat, I gotta say I slept on CM Punk's run in WWE. I just wasn't really watching the show at this point. But all I've read in the last 10 years is how incredible the guy is in the ring. His TNA run is actually slightly longer than I expected. This could take a while. Hopefully he's good as you all say he is. I'd love it if we could see our first B, or maybe even an A for Ring of the Hawk in this episode. And of course... If you know a wrestler who can do the J-O-B to the H-A-W-K any night, any day, ha ha! Shove their name in the comments, Jack! All right, let's do it. CM Punk in TNA, slam dunk or junk. Match one, NWA TNA 2002. Triple threat elimination tag. It's Jimmy, don't let him near a mic, Rave. It's Jimmy Rave, and I'm ready to get this match over with so we can party! Woo! And Derek Wilde versus a blonde CM Punk and Ace Still. For some reason, they've got Sanjay Dutt's old theme music. And they're also taking on the Hot Shots. Oh god, this could potentially be two videos in a row where we've seen a wrestler squeeze their own junk. Our man starts out the match. Punk pointlessly bounces off the ropes with no end product. Punk then hits a jawbreaker and flies off the top with a crossbody on Chase Stevens. He then throws Chase onto Ace Steel's knees, I think. The cameraman missed it. What am I supposed to do? The winning team and the one that doesn't get pinned will be able to enter a gauntlet for the gold match later on tonight. CM Punk eventually gets back in the match and hits a low drop kick from the top rope. Punk then hits a backbreaker on Cassidy O'Reilly, but he gets floored for his efforts. Everyone starts flying through the air like a hawk as Punk hits a dive that the cameraman basically missed again. Ace still puts away Chase Stevens with a variation of the gory special. Damn, lovely move. Well, at least the Hot Shots didn't squeeze their junk. A great high-flying debut from CM Punk here, but his partner Ace still outshone him a bit. A debut C for Punk here. Match 2. Later in the night, gauntlet for the gold match. Punk comes out just as his own partner Ace Steel is eliminated. Pac immediately takes Punk out. Jimmy Don't Let Him Near a Mike Rave is also in this match, and now he has Sanjay Dutt's theme music. How confusing. Punk gets beaten down and he's literally done nothing in this match. Just as I say that, Punk hits a bulldog. Punk then gets thrown out the ring by a Nazi. Or was it his twin brother who was? Or is it like passed down through the blood? I don't know, Punk's out and he gets an F. The less said the better. We are going to really need to improve here if we're going to see a B, or dare I squawk it, an A. His next match is eight months later. Well, I guess he didn't want to stick around and be jobbed out to the N-A-Z-I-B-A-L-D guy. Match three, fatal four-way elimination match for the X Division number one contendership. Jason Cross versus CM Punk, who now has red hair, versus Kid Romeo versus Paul London. This one should be good. Punk is thrown out the ring, but skins the cat. He needn't have bothered because he gets slammed on the back of his head on the outside. Our guy might be out for a while. Romeo dominates the match for a while before Punk wakes up and takes him out on the outside. In the ring, Punk lands on his feet from the German suplex. Punk then runs off the back of London and hits a shining wizard on Cross. Seeing Punk's now in control of the match after chucking Paul London off the top, Punk hits a total world backbreaker on Romeo. His run of dominance is then ended as Cross kicks him in the head. Punk then hits a vicious hammerlock DDT on Jason Cross. Somehow he kicks out. Great match here. Jason Cross hits a really nice neck breaker on CM Punk from the top and... Oh, that's it. Punk's out. The other eliminations are Kid Romeo putting Jason Cross away from the top and damn, Paul London looks like he's been in a back alley brawl here. But at least he wins with the shooting star press from the top so I guess it was worth it. A great match but I'm not sure why Punk went out so quickly compared to the others. I'm giving him a B for benefit of the doubt. Match 4, opener again. It's CM Punk who's now teaming with Jason Cross. 
versus AJ Styles. Man, I love the first version of the I Am theme. And he's teaming with D'Lo Brown. D'Lo is taken out pretty quickly after Jason Cross dives on him. On the far right of your screen, AJ Styles super kicks Punk over the guardrail. AJ tries to get the jump on him, but Punk drop kicks him on the outside. Back in the ring, CM Punk takes out AJ Styles again. Cross and Punk then hit a nice double team and Punk gets a two count on AJ. Punk carries on beating up AJ as he hits the hammerlock DDT, but he's unable to put AJ away. Styles has basically become isolated here. Jason Cross hits a flipping Unpredia. Damn, I love that move. Cross is also very good, so this team should have some good matches if it's to continue. Styles starts a fiery comeback and AJ then destroys Cross. I love this match so far. D'Lo then gets in the match for the first time and kills everybody. They hit a sky high neck breaker combination on Punk. They then destroy Cross from the springboard. D'Lo and AJ then hit stereo dives, landing at exactly the same time for the three count. Loved, loved, loved every second of this match. It has A written all over it. Find this match and watch it. Hell, pay for Impact Plus and watch it. It was great. Match 5, opener again. Six man tag. Kid Romeo, Damien and Johnny Swinger versus CM Punk, Matt Stryker and Frankie the Future Kazarian. Couple of guys in this one that I'm not that familiar with. Let's see how they get on. CM Punk finally gets into the match and takes out Swinger in the corner. Johnny Swinger almost puts Punk away with a weak looking move. He tries a backdrop, but Punk reverses it to land on top of him. Punk then fights Damien, who I've never seen before, but he gets a two count on Punk. He then launches Punk across the ring, and Punk tries to land on his feet, but he slips. The crowd aren't really feeling this one, and they're in complete silence. This match is not as good as it feels like everyone is just confused about what they're supposed to be doing. A couple of guys who are green in here. The crowd are bored and are just making up chants such as we want Pepsi. I know how they feel. Our guy is hardly doing anything in this match. He's just stood there like a statue. Punk gets bored of waiting eventually and charges into the ring. He throws Damien over the top and then he hits a really bad looking dive on the outside. The crowd keep chanting Pepsi at him. Matt Stryker is one unfortunate looking individual. If I had as many subscribers as he has individual eyebrows, I wouldn't be having to eat out of the bin this Christmas day. Punk hits a gory bomb, but Kid Romeo takes him out with a kiss goodnight. Kaz then wins the match by beating Damien with the Future Wave DDT. These opening matches on Old School TNA are such an interesting watch. You never know who's going to turn up. Unfortunately, I did not want to see some of these guys turn up, and it gets a D. Next up, we have the only singles one-on-one -on -one match Punk had in TNA, I believe. Raven has been feuding with Shane Douglas, and Punk is his little follower in the gathering, so that's how this one came about. Match 6, it's the Clockwork House of Orange Fun match. Shane Douglas versus CM Punk in the opener, yet again. Punk is back to having blonde hair now. Punk starts out with a kick to take Shane down. He then wraps a steel chair around Shane's back and hits a Northern Knight suplex on top of it. Awesome, never seen that one before. Punk takes Douglas out of the ring with a super kick and then he flies through the ropes with a suicide dive that half hit. Punk tries to take out Douglas, but Douglas catches him and hits the Alabama slam on the outside. You'd think it was over after that, but Douglas carries on throwing Punk around the outside of the ring. Punk tries to mount some offense and throws a trash can to Douglas and he catches it and then Douglas smashes him with it as he jumps from the top. Well, what did you expect, you idiot? You have to be smarter than that punk if you're going to win on Ring of the Hawk. Punk fights back with a beautiful flurry of offense which ends with him jumping off the top with a chair. Punk gets a two count on a back elbow. Punk then hits a knee in the corner and follows it up with a lovely back breaker for a two count. Shane Douglas is losing so he boots Punk in the nutsack. He puts some brass knuckles on but Punk levels him with a chair. Another two count. Out of nowhere, Douglas hits a vicious belly to belly for a three. Decent match. After the match, James Mitchell comes out and shoots a fireball at CM Punk. The rest of the gathering then run out to protect him. Look, it's Mickey James. The match gets a C. Match seven, not the opener. Accompanied by Father James Mitchell, Disciples of the New Church and Shane Douglas versus Julio De Nero, CM Punk and Raven. Punk starts out taking out the New Church with a drop kick. The gathering then clear the ring and Punk has changed his hair again. It's now gone greasy. Punk hits a huge T-bone on Slash. He follows it up with a knee and a discus clothesline. His flurry of offense is ended with a power bomb. Raven bails out the match and chases Shane Douglas. Ha! <laughs> Raven is then taken away by a white gloved hand through a curtain. Punk and Julio take Slash out of a double team. Punk then lifts Slash up for a suplex but it all goes wrong and Shane Douglas jumps from the top to take him out. The gathering are left in a handicap situation. Well, they are until Raven crawls back covered in blood. Raven takes out all three on his own. There's then a ref bump. Raven tries to hit the DDT on Shane but he can't and then Douglas spears Raven through a table. The ref counts three. D. 
Didn't like it. Just another average match. Gonna give it a C and move on. Match 8, accompanied by James Mitchell, Slash and Sin, the Disciples of the New Church, versus CM Punk and Julio De Niro with Alexis Lurie. CM Punk launches his own partner out the ring, and then Punk dives onto Sin on the outside. The Gathering hit a double super kick on Slash for a two. The New Church then fight back and hang Punk on the ropes and then kick him into the floor. Back in the ring, the Church hit the double team elbows. Slash hits a huge vertical suplex and gets a two count on Punk. Punk tries to get the tag. He awkwardly flaps his hand around at De Niro. How did he not tag him? Punk makes the tag eventually. Julio, De Niro and Sin look like they're twins in their outfits. Who let two opponents wear the exact same outfit? Punk tries to hit a move from the top but he gets powder thrown in his face and Slash then powerbombs him. Somehow it's not a free. Punk and Julio then hit a net breaker powerbomb combination but the pin gets broken up. Slash then hits a big suplex on Punk in the corner. I'm enjoying Slash but not this other guy. Alexis dives from the top and takes out Slash with a DDT. De Niro then hits the full Nelson slam and has the win in the bag but Shane Douglas rolls out and assaults him with a chain and the new church win it. After the match Shane Douglas hits a belly to belly on Alexis. He then trims her fur. Shane Douglas is truly no buys. Sorry guys, I'm giving it another C. Punk and De Niro tried here, but the clashing outfits and Sin not being very good made me not enjoy this match as much. Match 9, main event, ugh, dog collar match. I'm starting to get annoyed now. Why was Punk put in all these stupid stipulation matches? Shane Douglas and the Disciples of the New Church. Man, Sin has some ugly Sanjay Dutt golden wings tattoos on his back. Versus Raven and The Gathering who all brawl straight away. Our man is chained to Slash and tonight he's rocking a bandana. The two long haired black leather men are chained together. Someone have a word with TNA management or I'll smack them one. Punk gets busted open by Slash. I might not say that much about this one, it's bowling shoe ugly. The Gathering win it, but the cameraman completely missed what happens because they're too busy focusing on Shane Douglas and Raven. F. Match 10, main event for the second time in a row. It's Slash and Vampiro with James Mitchell versus Punk and De Niro. De Niro catches Slash from a dive straight away and slams him. Punk fights Vampiro in the ring, but pretty quickly everyone ends up fighting on the outside. Vampiro starts headbutting Punk and busts him open. Punk is in big trouble, but gets a huge hope spot of a Russian leg sweep and tags De Niro in. De Niro hits the full Nelson slam, but the referee is distracted by James Mitchell on the outside, who is doing absolutely nothing, actually. De Niro stacks Slash up on his shoulders, and CM Punk leaps over the top to hit a net breaker. This time, Mitchell does have the referee distracted. Vampiro then hits the nail in the coffin and puts De Niro away. Not a good match. Can't we just go back to his early days in 2002? Punk was great, but this 2003 is full of Ds. I hate to say it guys, but we're 10 matches down and Punk has not scored a single pinfall. Surely that has to improve. Match 11, Kid Cash and Laz. Oh for God's sake, not this guy again. It's a man, dressed as a woman, with his face painted like Sting, who thinks he's Britney Spears. Versus Punk and De Niro. Surely Punk can get a pin here. Punk tries to wrestle Laz who tries to grope him, so Punk just elbows him in the head. Punk and De Niro then work together to take out the cross-dressing Sting slash Britney Spears impersonator. His real name is just a four-letter word, you use it you idiot. No more long nicknames, I want this match over with. Punk takes Kid Cash out when Paint brushes him in the corner. The highlight of the match is Punk trying to get in the ring and gets his leg caught on the ropes, and then for some reason they decide to highlight it in a replay. Cash and Laz eventually fall out, and Punk gets the tag. De Niro and Punk hit the powerbomb netbreaker on Laz and De Niro pins him for the free. Punk gets a D. I really don't like the team of Punk and De Niro, I'm sorry. Match 12, tag team gauntlet match. I've covered this one before and I already know it sucks. CM Punk springboards into the ring to take out the fat cab driver David Young. It's probably the most impressive thing he's done in about 8 matches. He then jumps from the top to take out Disco Inferno. His offence is eventually stopped by a flying Braden Walker. Umaga then enters the match and takes Punk out of a belly to belly. He then presses Punk and chucks him out the ring. The less said about this one the better. Moving on quickly, give him a D. Match 13, second match in a row that we've already watched on this series. It's Sonny Siaki and Umaga with Trinity versus De Niro and Punk who are no longer associated with Raven. Punk almost gets a broken neck from a half Nelson suplex from Sonny Siaki. Probably the highlight of the match. Punk does hit a bad looking DDT on Umaga. Punk and De Niro then hit a nice double team, but Siaki kicks out. Punk then randomly gets his first pinfall on Ring of the Hawk. I can't even really describe what happens, it just looks stupid. 
The match is a D. Can we please stop teaming Punk with De Niro now? It's just a waste of time. Match 14, Abyss and the Red Shirt Security with Don Callis versus Raven, CM Punk and De Niro. Oh, for God's sake, they're back together for a one night special. Lucky me. Punk snaps off a couple of hurricanes. He then takes out Joe E. Legend with a kick. Punk almost dies again from a clothesline backdrop combination from the red shirts. Punk's taking some big damage here as he kicks out from a release overhead suplex. Punk eventually tags out to Raven who takes care of everything. The referee is distracted and Abyss spears a steel chair into Raven and gets the free. This one wasn't a bad one because Punk carried most of the match. It gets a C. After the match, Punk and De Niro take a double choke slam. Match 15, the red shirt security and their awful theme music versus De Niro and Punk. Punk hits a nice springboard crossbody, but just like the last match, he ends up getting battered in the red corner. Northcutt whirls Punk around by his legs and Legend boots him in the head. Nice move. Punk gets a schoolboy, but as usual, the referee is distracted. Northcutt throws Punk overhead with the pump handle again, but Punk kicks out of this. It's the exact same match as the last one, with Punk being isolated. Punk eventually makes the tag, and after about 30 seconds, De Niro rolls up one of the red men for the free. Just give it another C. Match 16, main event, Rage in a Cage. Abyss and the Red Shirt Security versus Raven and the Gathering. Finally, at least something a little bit different. Punk is busted open within the first two minutes. Punk throws Joe E. Legend off the top of the cage. There's then a massive brawl around the outside. Punk and Abyss are fighting on top of two tables that are stacked together. Punk then dives off the top of the cage and crushes Abyss through the two tables. The Gathering then get out some handcuffs and handcuff the red shirts to the cage. Abyss gets up and launches Punk into the cage. Raven creams Abyss with a chair and then the Gathering hit a concerto on the red shirts. Raven then goes for his DDT and oh! The Gathering turn on him and then they give him the concerto. Abyss gets the win. I think Punk's a heel now. I didn't see that one coming. A B for that. Pretty good quick match. So CM Punk is now a heel for the first time in TNA. With Punk now heel, he's starting to cut more promos and the dude's showing more personality. He's always been good on the mic, but he wasn't getting a chance to show that before. Match 17, Punk and De Niro versus The Man Called Raisin and Sandman. The ECW guys start out by spitting beers on our guys' faces. Raven then goes for a DDT and Punk and De Niro have to bail to the outside. I really think Julio De Niro looks like a cold-blooded version of Matt Hardy. De Niro is carrying most of the work in the match before Punk gets in and hits a dropkick. Punk then wipes the Sandman out with a leg drop. CM Punk tries to hit another dive but misses and Raven gets the tag. There's then a ref bump. Suddenly one of the Undertaker's druids appears at the ring and he sprays something on a towel. The druid holds it across Raven's face to calm him down. Punk then grabs Raven and hits the DDT and he pins Raven for the free. Probably the biggest win in Punk's TNA run, the match gets a B. The Druid is then revealed to be Father James Mitchell, the same man who shot a fireball in Punk's face not that long ago. Match 18, double Singapore cane match. The Gathering with Father James Mitchell versus the Sandman and Raven. The match starts out without Raven, so Sandman is left in a handicap situation. Despite this, the Sandman beats our team up on his own on the outside. Back in the ring, Sandman hits a top rope hurricanrana. Punk gets the advantage with a shining wizard and he follows that up by paintbrushing the Sandman. Punk and De Niro hit a backdrop elbow drop combination. Our guys then each collect a kendo stick and take turns smacking the Sandman's head in. He's barely affected though and he hits a Russian leg sweep on Punk. Sandman gets hold of his favourite weapon and takes the gathering out. Punk and De Niro then hit a double super kick and it's over. Raven never turned up. Pretty boring, it gets a D. Punk and De Niro attack the Sandman with the sticks after the match. Match 19, the gathering with Father James Mitchell versus the Sandman and Balls Mahoney. Mahoney takes the gathering out with punches. The gathering fight back with a pair of kicks. Sandman hits the top rope hurricanrana on CM Punk and Balls Mahoney follows it up with a frog splash. Somehow it's not over yet though. Mahoney then takes Punk out on the outside of the ring. Punk eventually hits a move as he connects with the springboard dropkick on Sandman. Balls then gets in the ring but he gets a shining wizard chair shot straight to the face. Punk and De Niro then work together to hit the elbow drop and slam combination on Balls Mahoney for the free. They both make the cover and it's a tornado tag, so I guess, yay Punk, you got a pinfall. A good short match, C. Match 20, CM Punk and De Niro with Father James Mitchell versus The Sandman and Mikey Whipwreck. Mikey pretends he's on the gathering side but then he just takes them out. Mikey struggles to open his can of beer so The Sandman breaks it open with his own head. Whipwreck takes Punk out of a stunner. 
Sandman then hits the top rope her piranha on Punk. Our guy starts hitting the Sandman with a kendo stick, but for some reason it's no DQ. Sandman then takes the gathering out on his own. Punk then picks him up for the backdrop and De Niro springs off the top to take Sandman out once again. And it's over. Really short match here. I give it a D. I wonder who Sandman's going to bring with him next from ECW. Match 21 with Father James Mitchell, CM Punk and De Niro versus The Sandman and Terry Funk. Sandman hits Punk with a stick and then hits the Russian leg sweep. All of these matches are no DQ for some reason, I'm just going to leave it at that. Punk hits Funk in the ribs with a chair. Punk then gets a two count. Next up we see a move that we haven't seen from this team as the gathering hit a spike pile driver on Terry Funk who somehow kicks out. Punk is really starting to show more character here. It's clear that he's far superior to his partner and far superior as a heel. Punk and De Niro then mess up as Punk tries to hit a hurricanrana on Funk but he misses and hits his own partner. Punk and De Niro then hit their finisher across a chair and they pin Sandman. The gathering getting quite the push here. Giving Punk a C here as the match was a bit botchy but Punk's character work is improving. Match 22, Punk and De Niro versus Terry Funk and, oh, Raven, he's back. Terry Funk immediately gets taken out of a chair. Raven takes out our guys like they're nothing. After a short time, the gathering fight back with a kick to knock Raven out the ring. Back in the ring, Punk is beating up a bloody Terry Funk. Terry Funk connects with a stunner on CM Punk. CM Punk's going nuts and screaming and cussing. De Niro dives onto the top of Funk as he gets his knees up and he makes the tag to Raven finally. Shortly after this, Raven wins the match with his DDT. After the match, James Mitchell uses a stun gun on Terry Funk. Did not like this one at all. It's all about Raven. It gets a D. Match 23. Final match. Punk and De Niro with James Mitchell versus Raven and Sabu. Just being honest, I don't think our guys have a chance here. Sabu dives onto the gathering over the top rope to the outside. It's not a very good match. Raven wins with the Raven effect. Sorry, folks, not much to say in his final match. So that's it. Just after this, CM Punk was released from TNA due to getting into a fight with Teddy Hart. They both got released. Reportedly, Punk lost this real fight. It's really hard to grade Punk's run for Ring of the Hawk. It started out amazing and then got completely overshadowed by Raven with a stream of brain-numbing matches. And I'm sorry, but I did not like the team with Julio De Niro. He was obviously far above the guy. I really thought we could see an A or a B here, but unfortunately for Punk, I'm giving him a C. I will cut him some slack though, I'm going to stick him at the top of the C, guys. So our quest continues to find someone who wrestled fewer than 30 matches, but can get a B or even an A overall. And if we don't do it soon, I think I might hurl.